The story of Apollo 11 is one of heroism, bravery, and a testament to the ingenuity of man, to be sure. But as well as this, within this video, we will be exploring the many near misses and unforeseen incidents that nearly led to both the destruction of the spacecraft and quite possibly the end of the space program itself. When one thinks about the space program, the 1969 moon landing is typically the first mission that comes to mind. Regarded as an act of precision and greatness, the landing is often seen by many as a matter of engineering perfection. Yet while it's true that the mission as a whole was a resounding success, there were many times where disaster was but a hair's breadth away. These flirtations with disaster are often disregarded and otherwise glossed over in much of the official versions of history. However, from a storytelling perspective, these omissions are something of a mistake as it's these close calls and unexpected occurrences which add a deeper excitement and awe to an otherwise somewhat dry description of events. Without knowing the full details of how close NASA came to disaster, it can be difficult to fully appreciate the heroism of which the history books speak. So join me now as we explore the story of Apollo 11, Seconds from Disaster. Of all the rockets man has created, the Saturn V is by far the heaviest and most powerful, weighing 6.2 million pounds and using a million gallons of highly explosive rocket fuel, the Saturn V creates more power than 85 Hoover dams. To be more precise, this equates to 220 million horsepower. The sheer power of the rocket's explosive potential was almost equivalent to that of the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima, with its deafening noise at launch being greater than that of 500 jumbo jets combined. However, prior to the noise, the lift and triumph which would follow, there was a problem, a deadly serious problem. The beast had sprung a leak. The mammoth vehicle was seeping fuel, and even as the astronauts themselves boarded the command module in preparation for launch, technicians worked furiously to solve the problem. With only hours to spare and the astronauts already inside the spacecraft, the location of the leak was finally pinned down and fixed. Throughout the ordeal, with engineers working at a breakneck pace to solve what could have been a fatal and disastrous problem, astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins remained in the dark about the whole matter, as NASA reasoned that since they expected the technicians to plug the leak, there was no need to worry the crew. As the astronauts were descending towards the surface of the moon some 230,000 miles from Earth, communications suddenly cut out. Mission Control, immediately upon losing connection to the crew, embarked on a desperate mad dash to restore contact in any way they could. The solution they came up with was far from perfect, but functional enough. Rerouting the comm signal through the command module orbiting high above the lunar module, they managed to restore a weak link between the lander and Houston. However, even with communications restored, their troubles were far from over. As the astronauts turned on their landing radar, 
a master alarm suddenly went off. This was the infamous 1202 alarm. 1202. 1202. 1202 alarm. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. An alarm which indicated what was known as an executive overflow with no core sets. Absent and overly involved in technical explanation as to what this means, the minuscule onboard computer had become overwhelmed by all the data flooding in from the landing radar and was subsequently shutting down. Both mission control and the astronauts were baffled. This wasn't part of their rigorous training and most certainly not part of the plan. No one knew if it was to be a showstopper or not. No one, that is, except a young computer engineer named Jack Garman. He knew that the alarm itself was fine as long as its sounding did not reoccur. As you might expect, however, that's exactly what it did. With the surface of the moon drawing ever closer, Armstrong saw no choice but to disengage the computer and take manual control. The problem with the landing radar computer interface had had one more unforeseen consequence. The lunar module was now considerably off course with no suitable place to land. Around them was a seemingly endless field of craters, boulders and obstructions. To make matters even worse, fuel was rapidly running out. With two minutes of usable fuel remaining, Armstrong desperately searched for a place to set down. The 60-second mark came and went, still no place to land. With only 30 seconds of fuel left, he had finally honed in on a spot to set the limb down. 15 seconds later, and consequently with only 15 seconds of fuel to spare, the famous phrase was transmitted. The eagle has landed. The response from Houston conveyed the suspense and powerlessness that mission controllers had been feeling throughout this ordeal. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. As the astronauts were preparing to leave the moon and return to Earth, it was Buzz Aldrin who noticed something was out of place. The end of the engine arm circuit breaker had been broken off. With life itself hinging entirely at this point upon a 10 cent piece of plastic, it was once again crunch time. Unless they could come up with an improvised way to flip the switch, there would be no way to fire the engine, thus stranding them on the moon forever. Rescue was not possible, and as before, Houston had no way of helping. They either had to find a way around the problem on their own, or die trying. Ultimately, it was Aldrin who came up with a deceptively simple yet brilliant solution. When the time came, he would simply flip the switch with the tip of a ballpoint pen. And as we know, it worked. But had it not been for that ballpoint pen, history would have remembered that day far differently. Everyone knew that landing on the moon was an extremely dangerous undertaking. Just how dangerous becomes clear, however, when examining the previously classified archives of President Nixon. The President's Chief of Staff, H.R. Haldeman, had Nixon speechwriter William Sapphire prepare a speech that would have been delivered in the event of disaster. The first two passages reads as follows. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. 
but they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. This document, not unveiled until 1999, is a clear indication of how dangerous this mission really was, and former astronauts have later commented that the amount of hazard they accepted in those days would simply be unthinkable for the NASA of today. Though the lunar landing was a monumental event in human history, the epic and harrowing reality to it is brought into even starker relief when we learn of and consider just how close to utter disaster these brave explorers were at seemingly every moment. For while it's easy for us terrestrials to imagine the challenge of space travel, it is easy to forget just what an unforgiving environment the void above our heads really is. Thank you for watching.